If you're looking to push rating in 2v2 this season, then this is the video for you. As today, we've hit up some of the best 2v2 players around and asked them for their opinions on what the 2v2 Season 3 meta will end up looking like. This is, of course, only a first look based off early season. Once the meta is further established, we will be releasing a more consolidated version. And if you want to try to make this season really count, why not try skillcap.com slash wow. We offer a money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 250 rating while using our website. So what are you waiting for? Start your season off the right way and visit skillcap.com slash wow today. Also, before we jump in, for our 2v2 tier list, we'll be doing something a little different. As healers are, for the most part, interchangeable in 2v2, we'll only be ranking DPS specs. That being said, we'll include what healers or even DPS partners are the best for each spec in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. So, kicking things off with our highest tier, which is S+, we've got Survival Hunters. Survival is the pinnacle of 2v2 arena currently, and honestly doesn't have many weaknesses. You've got very high consistent pressure, a mortal strike effect, and even very consistent instant crowd control coming from freezing trap and intimidation stun. More importantly though, survival thrives into any other melee, the main reason for this being Steel Trap, which is an 8 second undispellable route, making it almost impossible for melee to stick on you or your healer. Then just to add insult to injury, survival does great into all other hunters and also feral and assassination rogues due to mending bandage removing bleeds. We can safely say you'll be seeing a ton of survival hunters this season, especially once they get their tier set. As for partners. Holy Priest is by far the best, but Restoration Druid poses a decent alternative. Joining Survival inside of our S Plus tier, we've got Rogue. Not one spec in particular, but all three specs are actually performing at S Plus level inside of 2v2 this season. Outlaw is currently the most dominant, providing very high consistent pressure coupled with insane lockdown and control. What makes Outlaw so strong is that it's very durable thanks to talents like Float Like a Butterfly or Enduring Brawler. For healers, Holy Priest is the strongest, while Restoration Druid and Holy Paladin both pose good alternatives. If you prefer a little more control and setup based gameplay, then Subtlety offers exactly that. For this composition, you're going to need to be very coordinated with your partner. Making clean setups and filtering your way through your opponent's defensive cooldowns until you score a kill, which is even easier now as you can freely play with both Echoing Reprimand and Invigorating Shadow Dust for that shorter cooldown blind. For sub to work the best, you're going to need a Holy Priest healer, as the instant crowd control from Chastise makes your setups all that easier to achieve. Outside of Holy Priest, Sub can of course pair up with a Fire Mage and complete what remains to be strongest double DPS 2v2 composition. Then lastly to round out our rogue filled S plus tier we've got Assassination. Assassination has some of the most ridiculous damage imaginable thanks to the acquisition of tier sets this season. Especially the 4 piece which makes Vendetta kidney shots delete your health bar about 3 times over if you don't have strong defensive cooldowns to trade. Assassination, due to its high consistent pressure, doesn't need much support from their partners, so it opens up a lot of composition options. The best healer is still going to be Holy Priest, just because, well, Holy Priest is broken in 2v2. But you can still have success with Restoration Shaman or Druid, Mistweaver, or even Holy Paladin. Quite frankly, the only thing keeping Assassination in check this season are Survival Hunters with Mending Bandage. Probably the biggest shakeup of all comes in our S tier, in which our first edition is going to be Affliction Warlock. Affliction has had quite the glow up from last season. We're not exactly sure what changed as Affliction got zero direct buffs, but we can presume from other classes being nerfed and the removal of the versatility bonus from Trinkets has somehow catapulted Affliction into a dominant force inside of 2v2. You've got consistent high damage which then becomes overwhelming once cooldowns are popped, especially inside of 2v2 where healing is far less effective due to dampening. Affliction is also very hard for most melee to maintain uptime on, making it very frustrating to play against, and then when you do get a chance to hit them, Death Pact is a great defensive. This is then combined with the ridiculous self-healing from Drain Life, combined with the accrued Vitality Conduit and Claw of Endereth Legendary, making them very hard to kill overall. The buffs to Holy Priest have also aided Affliction greatly, making them by far the best healer, but Restoration Druid offers a somewhat weaker alternative. Joining Affliction inside of our S tier is going to be Demonology Warlock. I know what you're thinking, Demo Warlock? Yes, Demo is a spec which benefits greatly from both double legendaries and tier sets, allowing them to now benefit from both Bale Spiders burning core while still keeping the Shards of Annihilation Necrolord legendary. This enables Demonology to set up ridiculous levels of damage in 2v2 is the perfect playground to execute this, and when done correctly can result in Demon Bolts that can just straight up one-shot your opponents. 
There is of course counterplay, but even with minimal setup, Demonology can still do very high instant burst damage, especially now with the additional Demonic Core proc from the two-piece tier set. For partners, you guessed it, Holy Priest reigns supreme, but Restoration Shaman or even Restoration Druid still both work very well. And our third S tier DPS spec is going to be Feral Druid. Despite having quite a few difficult matchups, Feral is still having great success inside of 2v2, performing very well on both NA and EU leaderboards. Having very high consistent damage, great mobility, and the ability to deal damage while simultaneously avoiding it. The buffs to Holy Priest have also helped Feral Druids as the additional damage and instant crowd control from Chastise Fear makes the combination very deadly. With Ferals not really benefiting all that much from tier sets or double legendaries when compared to most specs, we could see them drop down later in the season, but for now, they're more than worthy of our S tier placement. To finalize our S tier, the last DPS spec making the cut is going to be Demon Hunter. Demon Hunters are looking very promising going into the Cosmic Season, with their 2 set only adding to the ridiculous levels of damage they're capable of dealing, not to mention the 4 set helping to reduce the cooldown of meta, which is often considered almost a soft enrage for most 2v2 games. The only thing keeping Demon Hunter in check currently is their defense, being one of the more squishier classes inside of 2v2. This can result in difficult matchups against classes like Rogues or Survival Hunters. That being said though, with the influx of Warlocks this season, Demon Hunter poses a nice counter and can still do very well into most matchups, purely because of their damage output. DH, much like Assassination, can pair up with almost any healer to great success, but the best of which currently is of course Holy Priest. Speaking of matchups, did you know there is one website where you can learn how to play your 2v2 matchups directly from the pros? I'm talking about skillcap.com, of course. Right now, for prices as low as $4.99 a month, you can get instant access to over 600 videos designed by some of the best players in the world. Our arena commentaries feature pro players who take you step by step through your hardest matchups in both 2v2 and 3v3. And with over half a million lifetime users having benefited from our website, we're so confident in your results that we even offer a money back guarantee if you don't see the rating gains you were expecting. So if you are ready to start the ultimate PvP journey, look no further than skillcap.com slash wow today. Link in the description below. Moving down to our A tier, now we have some specs you may not have expected. First of which being Arms Warrior. Arms has had probably the biggest fall from grace of any spec this season inside of 2v2. While easily slotting inside our S tier last season, ARMS has suffered massively from a huge nerf to defensive stance. This now makes previously winning matchups into rogues a lot harder, and now ARMS struggles into almost all of the comps we've covered up to this point. For healers, Restoration Druids are still recommended for their necessary throughput to help combat the nerf to defensive stance, but Restoration Shaman or Mistweaver Monk are both very good alternatives. Joining ARMS Warrior inside of our A tier, we've got Windwalker Monk. Much like ARMS, in fact, Windwalker received a large nerf to their one-shot mechanic with Bone Dust Brew no longer being able to critical strike, helping to heavily reduce their damage. Due to the nature of Windwalker and how easy to kill they are, you're forced into a hit-and-run playstyle as you lack the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most other melee. And now, without the complete cheesy one-shot mechanic, it's a lot harder to score kills if teams rotate cooldowns correctly. That being said though, we could see Windwalker Monks transition into a more consistent damage build, being Kyrian with the Invoker's Delight Legendary, but how much success this can have in 2v2 is yet to be seen. Moving on, our next A tier spec is going to be Fire Mage. Fire Mage is just ridiculous in PvP and somehow managed to dodge all nerfs. That being said, Fire Mage really isn't capable of reaching its full potential inside of 2v2 and as a solo DPS is too easy to counter. That being said though, when paired up with a Subtlety Rogue enables Fire Mage to shine, but without a healer means if enemy teams rotate defensives correctly, can often kill you before you're able to rotate through their defensives. If you wish to play with a healer, any healer with a short cooldown stun can suffice, with Holy Priest of course being the strongest, although pairing up with a healer will cause Fire Mage to drop down at least one tier. To round out our A tier, the last edition is going to be Beast Mastery Hunter. Without a doubt, one of the easiest and best specs to pick up and play at lower ratings due to their consistent high pressure paired up with the instant crowd control of Freezing Trap. All around, there's nothing wrong with Beast Mastery in 2v2. In fact, they have very good matchups into a lot of compositions. But survival is just a complete hard counter. The ability to remove Flayed Shot with Mending Bandage leaves you with next to no chance. Overall though, if you're looking to push 2v2, survival is a far better option. 
And with the upper echelon of our tier list covered, it's time to get into the more niche 2v2 specs, starting off with Unholy Death Knight. We've seen some players have decent success with Unholy inside of 2v2, but for the average player, it's an uphill battle. Unholy's burst is all revolving around Abomination Limb, and if players correctly rotate defensives, it can take quite some time to get in a position where you can score a kill. And getting to that position is nigh impossible due to the sheer amount of damage Unholy Death Knight takes against almost any other melee inside of 2v2. For healers, surprisingly, Holy Priest is the strongest, with Restoration Druid and Restoration Shaman being the two next best alternatives. And joining Unholy Death Knight inside of our B tier, we've got Fury Warriors. I think this is the first time Fury hasn't been at the rock bottom of a tier list in some time. The reason for their climb is the PvP talent Slaughterhouse, which when stacked up massively reduces the healing your target takes. Couple this with dampening and it can be almost impossible to heal Fury Warriors damage if they can maintain uptime. That being said though, akin to arms, Fury just takes way too much damage from a lot of the meta specs, and with the control of specs like Rogue or Survival Hunter, it can make maintaining your Slaughterhouse stacks almost impossible. As for partners, Fury, much like ARMS, prefers to play with high throughput healers like Restoration Druid or Restoration Shamans, and we've even seen Fury Warrior Enhancement Shaman do surprisingly well. Also making it to our B tier, we've got Retribution Paladin. Retribution is just sadly not made for 2v2. The lack of a mortal strike effect really makes it hard to create any meaningful pressure outside of your avenging wrath, making it so you almost have to hope your enemies make a mistake defensively in order to score a kill. Much like Beast Mastery in a sense, Retribution does very well at lower ratings, but the higher you go, the more you're going to struggle to score kills against competent players. Holy Priest is by far the preferred healer for the additional damage and instant crowd control, but Retribution can also pair up with other DPS specs to varying success. And then to round off our packed B tier, we've got three casters, which can all do decently well inside of 2v2, Elemental is the first. Elemental Shaman has very consistent damage and also good burst, but inside of 2v2, without a mortal strike effect, can struggle to create any real pressure until higher levels of dampening which reaching is pretty much impossible when facing some of the higher ranked specs on our tier list. For healers, you guessed it, Holy Priest reigns supreme, but Holy Paladin or Restoration Druid are the next best thing. The second is Destruction Warlock. Destro, if left to free cast, can do obscene amounts of damage, but come on, who's going to let a Destruction Warlock free cast? Most games for Destro just result in them being lined on all their cooldowns, and continuously interrupted until they inevitably get out pressured and much like elemental struggle to reach that point in dampening where their instant pressure is enough to score kills. And then to round out our B tier, we've got Frost Mages. Frost Mage can surprisingly do absurd amounts of damage, especially with the Necrolord ability Deathborn. The problem once again though, and what's preventing them reaching higher on our list, is that pillars still exist. Competent players will just line your cooldowns and then just run you down as outside these cooldowns your consistent pressure just isn't meaningful. But thanks to your mobility and slows, you can do very well into a select few melee, making the game very drawn out and miserable for all involved. Okay then, now we're going to be dropping down to our penultimate tier. All these specs are sadly just not made for 2v2. First of which is Marksmanship Hunter. While definitely capable of killing people in the opener, Marksman runs out of steam very quickly, and with being reliant on standing still in order to pump out meaningful damage, you will struggle into almost all melee that can maintain uptime. Plus, come on, why play Marksman when you can play either of the two Hunter specs, which are both infinitely stronger inside of 2v2? Joining Marksmanship Hunter, we've got Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest's core fundamentals are just not made for 2v2. You're essentially at this point a support class, and I can't actually think of a weaker 2v2 spec when paired up with a healer. But what's keeping Shadow from our bottom tier is the fact they can do considerably well in explosive double DPS compositions, most notably when paired up with either an Affliction or Demonology Warlock or even a Feral. Also finding themselves in our lower ranks is Frost Death Knight. Frost Death Knight as a spec is just not made for 2v2. Grouping targets up, having your partner stun, and then unloading a huge chill streak only really works in 3v3. Sadly in 2v2, this is just a lot harder to execute, as it's easier for teams to rotate cooldowns and just survive your setups. And without any form of healing reduction, Frost Death Knight's relatively weak single target pressure is just effortlessly out healed. And then, much like their unholy counterparts, take almost unhealable damage from most of the meta 2v2 specs. Then to round out our C tier, we're going to be slotting in Enhancement Shaman. Enhancement struggles as a solo DPS due to its lack of any real lockdown, and of course, no mortal strike effect. 
resulting in its best compositions being when paired up with another DPS, such as Feral Druid or Warriors. But as you can probably imagine, these types of compositions are very hit and miss depending on what you face, and if teams survive your burst setup will eventually just outlast you. Alright then that finally brings us to our lowest tier, these specs are almost non-existent inside of the 2's bracket, first being Balanced Druid. Balanced Druid just cannot kill anything solo, so having a healer on your team is out of the question, resulting in your only options being subpar double DPS comps. The only real composition we've ever seen have somewhat success is Balanced Druid Subtlety Rogue. Aside from that, any hybrid with decent healing can be an okay partner, but like mentioned, Balanced Druid just isn't for twos. And last, but more than likely still least, is Arcane Mage. Arcane Mage Burst requires a ton of setup and is very easily shut down. Compared to other mages, Arcane is all tied to one school of magic, so it is very difficult to simultaneously get crowd control and do damage, and to be honest, nobody really plays it for very good reason. If you're a masochist, or that one person still trying to make Arcane work, you should trick a holy priest into playing with you for the best results. On screen now you'll see a complete recap of all the specs and their go-to compositions. It's fair to say, out of healers, Holy Priest is leaps and bounds above all other healers inside of 2v2. I mean, just look at this class representation. Anyway guys, we hope you enjoyed this video and wish you good luck going into the new season ahead of us. And as you're still here, please consider subscribing to our channel for more up-to-date tier lists, and be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow, where we have plenty of class courses and arena commentaries that teach you how to play 2v2 just like a pro player. As always though, thanks for watching, see you soon.